Hey everyone, Leo with Dreaming Tree, and welcome to the assembly video for our rosette pinecone ornament. We're in the spirit now. Uh, Halloween's not quite over, but we like to get a head start on things, and our ornaments in the past have been quite popular, and many of you have been asking for some new ones, so here we go. Um, this one is going to be very quick, and here is, uh, well, this is pretty much it. So you're gonna have four of these, okay? These are about, um, just about, well, I think they're about an inch and a quarter. There's four of these. And each of these is about eight inches wide. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take two of these and join them together. So we'll have two rosettes. So here's one, here's another one, okay? And we have four of these. These are all the same size as well. Let me just get a measurement here. This is about an inch wide and six and a half inches long. We're gonna take two, put them on one side, take another two, put them on the other side, like so. And then we have this super long one, and this one is the widest as well. This is about an inch and a half wide, and it's about, well, let's see here, it's about almost not quite 10 inches long, and we're gonna join this together to make the largest rosette. Okay, so when making rosettes, let's start with the ones here that we need to join. What you're gonna do is we're gonna start folding these and on the first one, you're gonna wanna fold so that the first fold is a mountain fold. So you're making a mountain, okay? And then you're just gonna go back and forth and fold it all together. And you can kind of squish it all like this if you want until it looks like that. Okay, now on the other one, the other half, we're gonna start with a valley fold. Okay, so you can see it's like a little V. Instead of a mountain, it's a valley. And then each one after that goes the other way. And you just kind of go back and forth until you have all of them folded correctly. Okay, so the idea here is that to join these, we want these two to sit on top of each other like this. If these were both mountains, it wouldn't sit as nicely, wouldn't come out the way that we intend it to come out. So what I'd suggest doing is going through and folding all of these in that manner. So we're gonna do this one here. With this, we'll start with a mountain fold. Okay, so you can see there's a mountain fold, and then we'll go valley, mountain, valley, mountain, so on and so forth. Now I would, um, this is a gold metallic paper, so I opted to use the solid score lines with this, even though it's a solid core, it's not a white core, there's no white that would pop out, uh, I still thought it looked better. Okay, so again, now with this one, since we started with a mountain, we're going valley for the first one. Okay, so there's a valley fold there, a little V, and then you just go back and forth, folding it back and forth until it's all folded at the score marks, okay? And then it's just a matter of gluing the two sections together and then layering it. Uh, and of course, there we go, just like that. So we'll put that off to the side and we'll continue here with a mountain fold first on this one, going back and forth, just like that. Okay, so there's our mountain, and then here we'll go with a valley fold. There's your V, and then we go back and forth. Okay, now you can absolutely do this with the, um, what's it called? The perforated version, it's not a problem. I just think that the solid score lines do look better. Okay, so now we're going up to this one here and we're gonna join these two together, but first we're gonna fold them, starting with the mountain fold on the first strip, and then we'll do the valley fold on the second. Okay, just back and forth, shouldn't take long. I'm kind of going a little bit slower, just so that you guys can see what I'm doing. Okay, and with this one again, valley fold for the first one. And then there's one at the bottom that doesn't need to be joined, it's all one piece. Okay, and that one may seem kind of tricky to assemble, but I kind of figured out how to do it. And 
not have a problem with it. Okay, last little uh, strip that we have to join, starting with a mountain fold, and then just fold them back and forth, and you can see how quickly this goes once you kind of get into the zone. And with this, um, these solid score lines on the Cricut, I sometimes complain about them because I feel like they just don't score deep enough, but with this thicker paper, it seems to do a pretty good job. And when the lines are that small, you know, maybe like an inch and a half, two inches, uh, it folds pretty well. Can't really complain. Okay, so there's that one. And then this one here, um, this one doesn't really matter. This one is all by itself. It's the longest one, longest individual one. Uh, and we're gonna actually be gluing this to itself. So it doesn't matter where you start. You could do a valley fold, you could do a mountain fold, doesn't matter, just go ahead and get it folded. And just make sure you keep this one off to the side so that we don't get it mixed up with any of the other ones that we need to actually join. Now, depending on what kind of paper you're using, again, in my case, now see that's where the fold just didn't work very well. And that's okay. A rosette doesn't need to be completely perfect as long as it has that basic structure, we're gonna be okay. Okay, but that's what we want it to look like. Um, lost my train of thought here. Um, anyway, I'll, I'll figure out where I was. Okay, so what we're gonna do, so we've got these two strips. Oh, this is what I was gonna say. Um, depending on what kind of paper you're using, in my case, again, I've got a, a gold foil. Uh, I, I'm sure we've used it before. I'm not exactly sure how porous it is and how well it will work with glue. So what we're gonna do, I'm gonna grab I'm gonna grab the piece that starts with the little valley, and I'm gonna throw a little bit of glue just on the very end here like this. Okay, and I'm gonna take this and put the other side, the other half on here, and you can kind of just then take it and just kind of squeeze it together. Okay, and just hold that little spot right there until that glue completely sets. And that's what I was gonna say is, depending on what kind of paper you use, to join these two strips together. If regular glue doesn't work because you're using like a foil, uh, you can hot glue it. That shouldn't be a problem. It seems that the regular glue is working just fine for me here. So I'm just gonna take this, I'm gonna squeeze it together just to make sure everything sits nice and flat. See if there's any adjustments I may need to make to the actual rosette. I don't think that is. I don't think I will have to. It's pretty flat, I'd say, okay. So it is now joined, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna take it and flip it around like so, and we're gonna connect the other side together, okay? And then that's gonna make one of the rosettes. So we can take and apply some glue. Again, if you're having a hard time with the standard glue that we typically use, then by all means, grab your hot glue. Um, just make sure that you use very sparse amounts of it. You don't want to cake it too much. So I'm just sticking it in there, and I'm just gonna grab a few of these layers and just use that to kind of help press that into place. And just be patient while it sets. It's kind of wacky right now. It's not in its shape that it needs to be, but that's okay. We'll give it a second, and then what we'll do, once it's fully dry, you can then bring it down, and that's how we're gonna form the rosette. Okay, we don't need to worry about that just yet. We're gonna go through and form all of these first, okay? Now, if it helps you uh, when it comes time to actually put all these together, if it helps, you can write down the width of each of these once they're assembled. Like this one is, this one's the one that's an inch and a half wide. So this is inch, an inch and a half. I'm just gonna pop that in there just so that I know which one's which, okay? And now this one here, uh, this one's gonna be the one that's an inch, just one inch wide, okay? And there should be two of these, which are right here. We're gonna put these together, just like we did the first one. So go ahead and throw a little bit of glue on one end, grab the other end, pop it right on top, and then you can just kind of take and make sure it's in there all the way. Just take and kind of squeeze it all together and just press and hold. Give it a few seconds to set. And now we have one continuous strip you don't wanna kinda of jump the gun here. I'm gonna kinda of move a little bit quicker than you should probably move, just because I don't want you to sit here and watch glue dry. It's almost as fun as watching paint dry. Okay, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna glue the other end 
to this guy here. So just throw a little bit of glue on that there. And it doesn't need to be perfect at this point. Again, we don't need to form it. All we need to do is get this piece on top of this piece. So you can actually do it this way, like that. Okay, and then just take and kind of squeeze a few of these layers together. Make sure it's nice and centered. And then just press and hold that in place. Give that a few seconds. Okay, so that's what it looks like. And then ultimately, again, I might be jumping the gun here, and I am, because it's it just slipped out of place. Okay, so don't do that. I have to re-glue that. And I knew that was gonna happen, but I did it anyway. So I am gonna I'm gonna be a little more patient here. Get that in there. Press and hold. Let me grab a few layers. And just be patient. If you have some clothes hangers, you can pop those on there and just kind of let them sit while that fully dries. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to leave that alone for a minute while I put the other one together. Remember, these are the ones that are one inch. Okay, so let's grab a little bit of glue, throw it on there, grab the next piece, make sure it's as far in as it'll go. And then just grab a few layers just to help you kind of add a little more pressure on there and just squeeze. There we go. Okay, now it's one solid piece. And you can see this piece is gonna go right underneath this end. Okay, so you can do that however. I'm just, I'm literally taking it right now and just bringing it over like that. That way I don't have to try to shape it right now. Okay, so it's just gonna go like that. Now if you wanted to get a better visual on this, because I'm a visual learner, I like to kind of see things. Okay, it's gonna go around like this. This piece is gonna go around and underneath like that. But again, you don't need to do that. You just throw a little bit of glue right here. Grab this piece, pop it right on there. Make sure it's in all the way. Make sure it's centered. And then you can grab a few of these layers and just kind of scrunch it together and press and hold. Okay, so now remember these, both of these are one inch. Okay, so I'm just gonna take a scrap piece of paper and just write one inch. Okay, just stack these together. And I'm just really gonna let these set completely before we start to form them. Put that off to the side. And then we have, these are the inch and a quarter ones. Okay, and the same process applies here. I'm just gonna throw a little bit of glue right on this guy here, nice and thin. Don't overdo it. You're going to be sitting there waiting for it to dry for ages if you do that. Grab the other side, pop it right in place. Make sure it's going as far as it can go. And then just grab a few layers and give it a good squeeze. Just help that glue really penetrate into the fibers of the paper. Okay. There we go. So now you can see here, we've got a valley and we've got a mountain. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take that and just pop it right on there like that. Just like that. Okay, so let's throw a little bit of glue right here. Nice and easy. Take this, pop it right on there. Make sure it's as far as it'll go. And then just take and bunch up a few of these layers Make sure it's nice and nice and centered. You can do that by literally just taking your fingers and giving it a squeeze like that. And then press and hold. Okay. So again, this is the one that's an inch and a quarter. I'm gonna grab a scrap piece. 1.25. I have one more of these to make. Okay. There we go. Let's join these two together. Okay, you can take a few of these layers. I'm not exactly sure why, but it helps. At least I think it does. It feels like it's helping, just kind of bunching these together. Okay, 
There we go. And don't worry about that one that's a little flat. And then again, you've got a mountain here and a valley here. This is going to go right on top of that like that. It's very simple. Okay. So let's just take a little bit of glue, pop it right on there, bring that around and join these two sections together. And let's grab a few of these layers and just press them together. We're only gluing the two sections together, but again, I like to kind of grab a few of these layers and just kind of thicken it up a little bit as I'm pressing. Okay. All right. So another 1.25 inch wide one. Okay. We'll put that off to the side. And then finally, this is the one that's 0.75 inches. So three quarters of an inch. Uh, this one we're joining to itself. Okay. So we started here. We have a mountain. At the end, we have a valley. And all we're going to do is take this, bring it down, and connect these two layers together like so. Okay. So on the mountain side, from underneath, you can throw a little bit of glue. And then you're going to take the end of the valley, just bring it down, and right on top of that. Okay. Make sure it's going all the way as far as it can go. And give that a good press. Okay. And if you want, for the sake of consistency, you can grab a scrap piece of paper and write 0.75 on this one. Okay. Cause that's how I'm going to, I'm going to refer to them, um, with this numbering convention. Okay. And that's 0.75. There we go. Okay. Okay. So we're going to start forming the actual rosettes. Uh, I'm going to start with the one inch piece. So I grabbed one of the pieces off the one inch pile and the easiest way to uh, form this, well, you're going to need to play with it a little bit. Okay. But ultimately let me grab this other one so I can show you here. You do want to try to squeeze this in together and get it as small as you can possibly get it so that it's somewhat shaped and then start to kind of flare out the bottom a little bit like this, just kind of start training it out. And then ideally you should be able to take and kind of pinch these in and flare the bottoms out. It's going to take a little bit of finagling here because it's kind of small, but start to kind of push the, push them in. It was starting to kind of take its shape and there we go. Okay. So there you have it. There's the little rosette. Okay. So this is the one inch one and I want to try to kind of keep it as tight as possible. So two ways of getting this to stick and stay in place. Um, you can kind of hold it like this and then throw a tiny little bit of glue on the bottom. Okay. To get it to stick. What I'd like to do ideally is, well, I want to be able to feed, uh, I'm going to be able to feed some strength through this one. Cause this is going to be the one at the top. Okay. So since this is the one at the top, what I'm going to suggest you do is find a little string that you're planning on using to actually hang this from your tree. Okay. And feed it through and then decide how much you want sticking out. What we're going to do is we're going to leave this kind of hanging out. And then we're going to close this up and just make sure that that string is nice and centered and make sure you have just enough. It's almost a better idea to have a little bit more. Okay. And then you can kind of just hold it, hold it in place, flip it around, and then we're going to throw some glue on the very bottom of this. I got to turn my hot glue gun back on. It's got like an auto shut off and we're going to just glue it shut. And once this is glued, we can trim off the string that's on there. It's not a problem. And just do your best to try to keep this nice and level and straight. Okay. So I've got plenty of string on here. Okay. I'm waiting for my hot glue gun to warm up and just go ahead and hit that middle with some hot glue. Of course, I just had to put a new one in there. There we go and get your hot glue on there. And then, yeah, we're going to feel a little burn here. Just spread it up and out nice and thin. 
because we don't want clumps of hot glue on here. We want to try to keep these layers as flat as possible. Okay, so I'm just kind of spreading it around nice and thin. Get the little wispies off there and I'm just using my finger to kind of hold it together. Okay, so I'm going to trim off the rest of the string on the bottom here. Okay, and it doesn't look that great on the bottom, but that's okay because it doesn't really matter. We're going to cover that up with the next layer. Um, okay, so we've got the first layer. It's looking great. I've got a few little of those little uh, wispies in there from the hot glue. I'm going to pull those out with something safe, maybe like a Q-tip something that I that won't scratch up the inside there just kind of clean that off if that happens this is why I'm not a big fan of hot glue but it's okay it's on the same level as glitter in my book okay so now what we can do is we can take and we need to find a well, we'll grab one of your 1.25 inch pieces that's this guy here Okay, and this one should be a little bit easier to form into a rosette because it's a little bit bigger. So just take it and just kind of scrunch it together first. Try to kind of get it into the shape and then just take it and flatten it out like so. Another way that you can do this successfully uh, if your paper is thicker is actually putting glue inside the little circle. Okay, so this make it a little messy, but if you take, what's going on here? There we go. Not a, it's the only thing I don't like about this glue gun because it shuts off automatically. So kind of get it ready like this. And then what we're going to do is we're actually going to put the glue inside and this might actually make things look better, especially if you have like a, uh, a very shiny paper so you don't blemish the top or the bottom. Okay, so kind of hold it like that so it's almost ready to go. And just kind of throw a little bit of hot glue inside. Okay, and then once you've got that in there, squeeze it together and hold. And just press down from the center. Give that a few seconds. Um, it's very possible that it may kind of stick to your table. It shouldn't, but if it does, just pop it off and that's totally fine because it's nice and flat now. Okay, so that's, that's going to be okay. And let's see how that goes. Yeah, you want to keep holding it until it sets, obviously. And while it's doing that, if you want, you can reinforce it a little bit by putting a little bit of glue on the bottom as well. Um, if you're using cardstock or thinner paper, you're probably not going to have this problem. I am using, this is probably at least 100, maybe 120 pound paper. Okay, I got this from um, 12 by 12 cardstock actually. Okay, so there's that and there's the next piece. And all we're going to start doing now is just layering this. Okay, so the idea here is that we want to try to keep it as flat as possible. Okay, so that's another reason why we almost don't want to have hot glue on the bottom of this because it does kind of add to the thickness. Okay, so we want to try to keep that as thin as possible. And we're just going to start layering this. You want to make sure that you get it nice and centered. Okay, so you can kind of take a look at it from the side. And what I would try to do is try to stagger these so that they're kind of offset so that you have one of the valleys. Um, actually, yeah. Yeah, it have like valley on top of valley, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Okay, so let's get that glued into place. So we can throw a little bit right here in the center. Try to make it nice and thin. You don't need a large amount, just enough. Give it a little swirl. Grab the next layer. And again, valley on top of valley if possible. And just give that a good tight squeeze. Make sure it's centered, mine's not. Yeah, so look at it from the top, I think is probably the best bet. That way you can make sure that it's even all the way around and centered. You can also see the little valley structures um, from the overhead view as well. And there we have our next layer. Okay. And you do want to try to keep it 
balanced and nice and even throughout. Okay, so kind of spin it around and make sure it's nice and level. And that looks good. Perfect. Okay, so that was our 1.25 inch piece. Now we need a, the 1.5 inch piece, which is the largest piece. Okay, so that one is pretty much done. This one should be very easy to form. Just kind of make sure that the, the kind of the bottoms of them are facing out. So that they're kind of curved in, almost like how you would make a, a fire. Stack the wood in that manner. So you're kind of like doing that like that. <laughs> it's kind of hard to explain. Okay, but there's the there's the next rosette. Give that a good press in the center. Give it a good push in just to get an idea of what it's going to look like in the center there. Okay, and then you can kind of hold it somewhat closed. And let's spread a little bit of glue around the inside there. Okay, and then just give that a press in and hold it. Okay. And just keep holding, let that glue set completely. I've got some left over here and that's okay. It's gonna seep through a little bit. And I don't think I got enough in there, but this is what's cool about this method is now you have a tiny little hole and you can kind of fill that with a little bit of glue. There we go. And press that in and now just be patient while that sets. Okay, so it's pretty straightforward for the most part. And of course, you can decorate this however you want when you're done with it. Um, we're going to, we have this cool little tassel. Okay, so there you have the rosette, nice and flat on the bottom, not a bunch of glue sitting there, sitting pretty, and it's ready to be joined to the next layer. Okay, so again, we're gonna take this and try to get it nice and centered, try to maintain those valleys and let's throw some glue on here. Nice and thin, you don't need to cake it. Spread it around, mostly just in the center part there where you actually have a lot of little surface area to work with. Okay, let's pop that in place, make sure it's nice and centered. Use those, those little valleys. You're not, you're not gonna get them all perfectly matched up, but try and just focus on making it centered and then take a look at it from this angle too and make sure it's centered this way as well. Okay, so that was our 1.5 inch piece. Now we're gonna grab another 1.25 inch piece. That's this guy here. And again, let's build our little fire and stack that wood and press it down. Okay, hold it in place. Make sure it's all nice and in as far as it'll go. And then let it out just a tiny bit and grab that hot glue and just grab and, uh, sorry, fill that hole with some of the hot glue and then press it together. You can kind of smush down the top if you had a little bit shoot out, that's okay. And then just press and hold that down. Give that a few moments to set. I think that's the best place to put the glue again. Okay. And there we have it. Okay, that part. So just like we did last time, most of that glue went down to the bottom. So I'm gonna hit it with a little bit more at the top. And squeeze that together. And there we go. Just keep holding that until we're sure it's fully set. Got a little bit of glue on my finger there. Clean that off and just be patient with this. And there you have it. Okay, looks like I got a little bit of glue in there. I'll get that out. Okay, and I may just add a little extra here just to hold this together. It looks like maybe you can feel it. Again, I think uh, I'm, I'm having to do a little bit more work than some of you will probably have to do because of the thickness of this paper. Um, but again, if you're encountering that as well, 
just use a little extra glue and take a little extra time. Okay, so now we're gonna flip this thing over so I can actually see it from this side. And we're just gonna layer this in, just like we did before with the previous layer. I'm gonna find the flatter side. Let's throw some glue right here in the center where we've got all that nice surface area. Okay, nice and thin, not too much. Grab the next layer, make sure it's centered and use those little valleys to your advantage. And then again, take and just kind of rotate this thing around and just make sure that it's sitting nice and even, nice and flat throughout. Okay, so there we go. Getting very close. Got a couple more layers to go. Be patient while this sets. Don't jump the gun. All right, next up is the final one inch piece, which I have right here. Again, this one, I've already kind of um, released the tension in the paper, so that's why it's easier for me to turn this thing into a rosette. But there you can see how that works. I'm going to open this up slightly while I throw some glue in there right in the center. Okay. And then squeeze it together, press and hold. Just push it in as far as it'll go and just hold. I'm sure one of our brilliant fans is gonna come up with some schnazzy way to make this even easier and I'm sure I'll hear about it and I can't wait. I had a dry run at this. Oh, that one worked out really nice. Okay, but I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna force it and I am gonna cap it off with a little extra glue at the top, just a tiny bit. And press that down. And once you get into the, the zone here, I feel like this is gonna go a lot quicker. Okay. Okay, so we're down to the one inch piece here that we need to glue to the bottom. Okay, just a little bit of glue. And then we're gonna make sure that we press that nice and firm, get that nice and centered. I'm looking at it with like kind of an eagle eye view at the bottom, making sure that that previous layer has a nice, uh, well, is even throughout, I guess I should say. And, okay. All right, so that just leaves our last layer here. This is the 0.75 um, one in width. And again, this one's gonna be probably the toughest to form into a rosette because of its size, especially in my case, because of the paper that I'm using. So bear with me here. Just gotta kind of force it into place. Okay, again, we're like we're stacking some wood. There we go. And I think it's finally starting to give. Just gonna kinda bend it in on all the sides here. And there it goes. Okay, so now with this, uh, we're actually adding a little tassel to the bottom of this. So what I'm gonna do, similar to what I did with the string, I'm actually gonna take and I'm gonna put, put the tassel through and I'm gonna hot glue it while I actually hot glue everything together. Okay, so I'm gonna just pop this through like this. We'll just hold it like so. If you're using a tassel, then you, know, you can follow along here and do the same thing I'm doing here. Okay, just make sure that you are holding on to the end of it. Okay, and we're gonna trim this off once it's all dry, but we wanna make sure that we get it up as far as it'll go. Okay, and just like we did the last few times, I'm gonna fire up the hot glue gun here. All right, so just like we did before, let's open this up a little bit and just shoot some glue in there into the center. Swirl it around a little bit, get the little wispies off, press it into place, hold it. And then while it's drying, take and make sure that your little tassel is nice and centered. Mine's looking great. And we're gonna kinda have to hold it in the air while it sets, and that's okay. And you know what, that little, little bit of string in there actually, I feel like is actually helping keep everything together, which is pretty cool. Yeah, look at that. Okay, so 
there you have it. And then I'm going to take, I'm going to wait just a few more seconds here before I jump the gun. You can see that it's still kind of not fully hard. And then we can take and snip off that part of the tassel. There we go. Beautiful. And all that's left to do is just glue that to the bottom. So let's do that before my hot glue gun decides to turn off again. Use that center spot with all of that surface area. Grab the next piece, pop it right on there. Okay, I'm gonna take a look at it kind of from the side just to make sure it's nice and level throughout, nice and centered. And there we go. So I think the only other thing that I'm gonna to do to this is add a little bow. I've got some beautiful um, gold ribbon, like metallic gold ribbon, and we'll just tie it to the string. And make sure this is centered. It's kind of off a little bit. There we go. Beautiful little acorn element or ornament made from rosettes. And that's it. That's going to do it. So again, um, if you want, you can add a little bow and just tie it right to the top here. That'll kind of um, level it out a little bit and just make it seem more round. Um, but how about that? Definitely something different and unique for the upcoming holidays. So hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please visit our YouTube channel. We just hit 50,000 subscribers, actually 51,000 now. So thank you to each and every one of you that have subscribed. Um, make sure you hit that bell so you get notifications anytime we release a new product, whether it be paid or free. And if you make this or anything from our new bundle, I would love to see it and so would the rest of our community. So head over to your Facebook and do a search for Dreaming Tree Official or Dreaming Tree Group. I think it should still come up under that as well. But either way, I um, hope you guys are snuggling in. It's starting to turn. Well, it almost feels like it's getting wintry out there. Good time to get inside and prep for the holidays. Um, so hope you guys enjoy doing that. And as always, I look forward to crafting with you again. Hey, thanks for crafting along with me. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, check out some of our other videos. And also, please consider hitting that subscribe button. And don't forget to visit our site and check out our free SVG section where we have over 140 free SVG files complete with assembly videos. I look forward to crafting with you soon.